everyone, Joker here. Uh, what I'm going to do is a quick little video on how to decompile models from Team Fortress 2 to bring them into Maya so you can see the proper way to do it for referencing on size and position when you want to make a new model. Now the things that you'll need are the Source Model Decompiler, Notepad++ if you don't have the hacked version of the Model Decompiler, GCF Scape or GCF Explorer, and Prawl's SMD plugin for Maya. GCFs are Steam's way of archiving, archiving files for games. Uh, what you see here are the different source, Team Fortress, and a couple other game uh, file, uh, GCFs. Uh, we're going to want to open the Team Fortress 2 materials, which can take a couple of seconds. Then we'll select the TF folder, go to Models, and in this case, we're going to go down to Weapons. Now if you want to do something like a hat or a miscellaneous item, you can find those in Player, Items, and then you can select the class that it belongs to, or All Class if it's an All Class item. But in this case, we'll go to Weapons, and we're going to W Models. Now, um, unless I actually know which one it's in, I'll usually go through C Models, V Models, and W Models just to find what I'm looking for. Or you can use the Search option, or Find option, and just type it in. In this case, we're going to do the wrench, which is all the way down here. Now, if I search wrench, I would find anything else that has wrench in the name, like the uh, Christmas wrench, um, the wrench VMT, the wrench VTF. Now, the main file we're going to be working with is the model file, but for the decompiler to work properly, we are going to need all of the W wrench files. So we'll just take all these, click and drag them over to a new folder. Now we could go ahead and close GCF and close that folder. Um, in the model decompiler, when you first get it, you'll have this line right here, use Steam file access checked. You want to make sure it's unchecked, uh, otherwise it'll give you issues, might not work, crap like that. Now the whole point in having Notepad++ is that way you can, if you don't have the hacked version, is that way you can edit the model file, find IDST0 in the first line, and change the zero to a comma. Then go ahead and save it. If you don't do that, the model decompiler will not be able to load the model. Now all you have to do is go ahead and select the model file, select where you want it to go, which in this case I'm just going to put it right into the same folder because uh, the wrench does not have that many files associated with it. Now if you're doing a character, you're going to want to create a new folder because there are a whole bunch of files, textures, stuff like that associated with it and it could get messy if you don't make a new folder. Now just go ahead and click extract loaded the model and it dumped the model. So now we see we have a couple of new files that popped up. Uh, the main one we'll be working with is the wrench reference uh, DMX SMD. You have these ones here which are just uh, the different levels of detail. The way TF2 renders the items is that uh, items have different levels of detail so depending on your distance it'll display a different level of detail with a lower number of polys. So that way you know from far away it's not rendering an entire full quality model when it doesn't need to when you're not even going to see the quality on it. This just helps save resources and all that. Now if you want to actually look at how uh, with your model how you might want to go about lowering the poly limit for this go ahead and load up either of those but in this case we're going to work with the main reference. Uh, now you just have to go ahead go into Maya, we'll go file, import SMD and we'll go ahead and go to that folder. Now you can see all the different SMDs in here. The idle SMD is nothing more than an idle frame. Uh, the physics model is actually the physics model. So you don't have to worry about either of those. And like I said, you can load the, the LODs up if you want to take a look at how Valve did it. But in this case, we'll just go ahead and click open. And then it'll ask you for a uh, texture. In this case, we do not need a texture and we also did not uh, grab the texture when we pulled those files out. So we're not going to worry about it. Just go ahead and click cancel. Now you'll see Maya start to build the wrench poly by poly. This is the actual in-game size. Now here it looks huge, but um, based on how Maya is set up for the ratio on distance with TF2, um, they'll be set to the same. So here what you see is the actual size in-game. Now it'll ask you this, your SMD import options. Um, Changing these can actually sometimes, depending on what you select, mess up your camera, so you might want to pull it up, but instead you'll pull it to the side. For weapons, usually you could just go no change. I only mess with it, like Model Z up, if um, 
I'm bringing character in and I want them standing up because they don't always stand up. Sometimes they'll load up and they're laying down just like those wrenches. So I click no change. Here we have the wireframe for the wrench. Just click smooth shaded and there you have your wrench in all of its glory. Now you can uh, select the wrench and check out all the polys. You can edit it, move it around, do whatever you have to do. Usually I'll do this, I'll move it to the side and if I'm going to model another wrench I'll just model it side by side next to it to keep uh, everything about the same size. And also so that way I can use referencing on the bone which is hidden inside the handle right now. So that way I know where the bone will be for uh, the engineer's hand so I can have him grip it properly. And that's all you have to do.